Hello, I'm Sergeis, and we continue with our Mesh to HRTF tutorial. In this video, we will produce the optimized mesh that will be actually used in the HRTF simulation. As you have seen in the previous video, we are working with over 5 million triangle mesh just for development purposes to preserve all the details. But now we are going to get it down to the reasonable size. As usual, you should open the link in the description to a written tutorial that's more likely up to date and contains other tricks, which I could not include in the video. So a quick overview of the written tutorial. We are going to use the HRTF mesh grading tool, which has been specifically developed to remesh heads and ears for HRTF simulations. It produces an optimized mesh, which has uh, almost no detail on one side and maximum detail on the ear, which you want to simulate. There are some default settings which uh, I'm going to use. To get the HRDF mesh grading on Linux and Mac, you have to compile it. But for Windows, if you have followed the installation tutorial, then you already have it under your mesh to HRDF tools in the HRDF mesh grading Windows XE. Again, as I'm working on Windows, I'll be using the shortcuts made for Windows version. Here is an overview of how to use HRTF mesh grading, but I'm going to show this live right now as well. And then there is the recommended HRTF mesh grading settings. Here there are some options. Primarily, if your computer has less than 32 gigabytes of RAM, you might want to experiment with uh, reduced quality. It's not such a big difference, but it may make a difference in terms of simulation time for you. And if you are just trying out things, uh, you may want to use some very rough settings just to get a very quick simulation up and running. And then there is a troubleshooting part, which discusses some common issues, including uh, what to do if HRTF mesh grading refuses to process your mesh. So, let's jump into the Blender, where I already have imported Mesh in your 3D view. You should see both the reference and your imported Mesh, and they should be aligned so that your imported Mesh looks in the same direction. So what we need to do from this point is we just need to export our Mesh so when you have a mesh selected, you go to the export, STL, you have selection only, and the name of the file should be 3D Mesh Original, which you can see here under View 3D Mesh Original. You can copy it from here, paste it here, and I'm going to save it in the actual HRDF mesh grading Windows XF folder. So I press export STL. And now it says zero. Now I'm waiting when the files are going to be written. Here it is. You can see how big a file is now. So it must have been written. And I'm going to use the existing batch file here to view the mesh using exactly the same code, which is going to be reading this file for mesh grading. As you can see, it opened well. Here we can reduce a crease angle. Everything is a bit laggy because you can see that this is 5.3 million faces. Not much of a difference with or without crease. And under curvature, I can select Gaussian curvature. This gives you an overview of potential defects. So as you can see, areas which should be smooth should be white. But here, for example, we have a defect. Clearly there is something going on, both blue and red at the same time, in a spot which should have been practically white. This seems to be perhaps OK. So this can be an issue, and we're going to try it out now. So you can see that if it fails now, 
you need to look for defects which are left there usually due to the sculpting sculpting is a method which really creates surface damages so all we need to do is run hrdf mesh grading and wait right now these are the settings it is using by default they have a difference from the recommended settings that uh, uh, one of the ER approximations is slightly changed to make it more compatible with most meshes. These settings can be adjusted later on, or if you see some issues with it, for example, opposite ear problem, if you see that the ear on the other side has either too much detail or has some really ugly defects on a mesh, then you can try to adjust those settings. And these files, you can always press edit on them show more options edit as you can see this is just a batch file and here are the actual commands where these are the settings here is the input file and the output files left and right so if you want to change settings, you can just edit these settings right here and click on the file to run it again. Done, F5. We don't see any outputs. And we don't see any outputs most likely means that uh, the code actually failed. When we looked at the viewer, we saw the potential reason why it failed. So let's go through some troubleshooting, which we can actually find in the previous tutorial, which is how to make sure a 3D mesh is ready. So the air tightness check, you can do that in Mesh Mixer very well, but I haven't installed Mesh Mixer yet. So let's assume we are on Linux and we don't have it. And also this check does not guarantee that uh, mesh will work. It helps you to find problems, but it does not fix all problems. It primarily addresses holes in a mesh, but not some kind of surface defects which are too complex to repair. Microsoft 3D Builder can also do some repairing, which can help, but it might also change the position of your mesh, which uh, you should double check if you do use Microsoft 3D Builder, so that the uh, mesh alignment is correct. It's very important that the mesh is correctly aligned for it to be processed in the HRDF mesh grading algorithm. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to go straight to last resort fixes. In mesh mixer there is a nice command called make solid. But in blender what I'm going to use is I'm going to use remeshing method. So I have the right mesh selected. I go to Sculpting, and here under Remesh, there is a possibility to, to pick a mesh density from the, your mesh. Here it says 0 0.29, 0.30. Well, actually, this is quite dangerous to rely on on this sampling because, as you can't really see, but uh, the mesh is not very regular. In this case, I'm going to go with something I used before and I'm going to set it to 0 0.16 and press remesh. This is going to take some time because uh, it's going to create a huge file really huge with lots of lots of details but in the process it's also gonna fix up some of the issues and remember our hrdf mesh grading algorithm is quite efficient even though it runs on one core it will process the file in just a few seconds okay perhaps a few seconds i think it's done now i'm gonna quickly re rename this one just to be sure I'll go back to a 3D view object selected export to SDL 
selection only export. And now we are waiting for this file to be written. I press F5 to refresh. It's going to be big, but it shouldn't be an issue because we will delete this file right after we do the grading. And here we are, 700 megabyte file. And we'll just directly run the remeshing on it. Okay, we have a first file out. As you can see, the output file is only one point something megabytes down from 700 megabytes. And while it's running, we actually can already review this. You can open this file in any software you want. And that's what you're going to see. You can see that one ear is almost gone because it's reduced in quality to a minimum and the other ear should be in perfect shape. So that's our left ear mesh. Okay, here's a bit of sticking out triangle, which we can clean up in Blender afterwards if we want to. So because this file is so big, it takes a while to process. Ear canal entrance statistics is a little bit strange. It, sh it usually is about the same on left and right side. So maybe I would need to double check this. But uh, let's see how it looks. Right file. So this ear looks good. This ear looks approximately as we expect. So there's something sticking out there. But we can quickly clean it up in Blender in the next step. Just for fun, you can press Gaussian Curvature and you can see that uh, quite a lot of small defects are gone from the top just because uh, it reduces the resolution of the whole mesh. That's the high quality mesh which we want because if you look at the actual ear, we the primary ear is very detailed and then everything else is less and less detailed. So we are good and to finalize our optimization process we go to import PLY format and we need to go to this folder and go import. The reason I'm using this uh, PLY format is because it doesn't have any settings on import. STL, you might have some weird settings which mess things up. Here, there's basically no settings. It, it just, it should be correct no matter what. So there you go. We now have left and right graded meshes imported. Here is a left one. Here's the right one. And uh, because we had this strange small defects here, I select the object, go into edit mode, press one to go into vertex select mode, and just select the this vertex, which I don't like, and uh, press grab X, no, Y axis, and bring it right in. So by doing this very advanced procedure, you can actually clean up some of your smaller issues with the opposite ear. It's always a bit of an issue on opposite ear, or it can be not perfect on the opposite ear because it tries to simplify quite complex ear shape into very, very rough polygons. So we do the same on this side, grab Y axis, bring in, grab Y axis. Did I do grab? Grab Y axis. Hmm. 
interesting. Unusual. Okay, and that should be it for the mesh grading tutorial. Now we have the two meshes after HRTF mesh grading imported into Blender. In the next video we are going to finalize these meshes and export it into a project which we can simulate. Thank you for watching and see you next video.